Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We'll be eating a lot of food tomorrow, having a bunch of fun and fellowship with the family and friends. So I know you are too, and we're all looking forward to it. So let's squeeze in one more good show this week. We've had some good guests, had some good guests coming the week after Thanksgiving. So we've been blessed with our guests. Let's take a look at our weather brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. It's cooling off some now. Uh, we've had some rain and uh, it's going to be a cool Thanksgiving, partly cloudy. Might get a little bit more rain, but uh, seasonal uh, weather is what we're having. High today, 64, low 45 tonight. So some of y'all will be having some fires, I know. The uh, water temperature at the end of the period is right at, it went below 70, it's right at 69 degrees, so it took a pretty sharp drop uh, real quick. Our river is brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Good folks down there. We're looking at the Apalachicola, Apalachicola at Bluntstown, 2.1, and the Choctahatchee at Caraville, 2.7. It'll be on the rise. The Apalachicola is going to stay pretty steady through the Thanksgiving week. And I know there'll be a lot of squirrel hunters along both river systems. I can guarantee you, you'll be hearing some guns of different calibers, uh, mainly uh, not, it used to be 12 gauge, used to be 22s and 12 gauge, but a lot of people now just hunt 20 gauge uh, when they're uh, squirrel hunting, but you'll be hearing a lot of it, okay? Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn, Neap Tides, not a much, much tidal flow. It's uh, actually a, high, a little bit of a high tide at 5.30 this morning. And a low tide tonight at, uh, we're right after lunch at 12.38. I know a lot of people do some surf fishing during the holidays, and we're going to talk about that. We're going, this is going to be our Friday show, so we're going to have our famous Friday fishing forecast at the end of the show, and we're going to give away some seafood too. So we'll treat this as a Friday show. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I took a double check on the tide chart, and really Saturday, we have a pretty strong incoming tide on Saturday afternoon, if, if that will help you out any on, on a fishing activity, because, uh, and a little bit on Friday, but a really strong tide coming in Saturday afternoon, so double check that, and you can get those tide charts uh, at C&G Sporting Goods. All right, let's get started. <laughs> this is a good one here. Our Eifert, the Eifert brothers, they fish, they've been on all these, they fish these tournaments religiously uh, throughout the panhandle with redfish tournaments, and they are really good red, red fishermen, and well, uh, they have Eifert Auto Repair on transmitter, and uh, the brothers right here, folks, they have won, look at here, Kevin Lee, Eifert, all I can say is wow. Day two of the Florida Redfish Series didn't go as planned, but luckily we, we were able to pull off the win. What a roller coaster tournament fishing is. We, thanks to Chris and Kelly Harwood and staff for putting on a great tournament series. Looking forward to January. Check out, the, check this out. The Eifert brothers. All right. Now here, here's, the, uh, here's the standings right here. Team Eifert in first place, then a team out of Gainesville, second place, and fifth place, Orlando. Look at uh, team five. That's the uh, Orlando Fish Bots. So they, uh, they fished against some really strong guys. They had 14.83 pounds. That's strong right there. Good job, Kevin Dennis. I'm proud of you guys. I am. Okay. This is one of my former students. <laughs> okay. This, this is uh, right here. Good morning, Coach. I got me a nice South Georgia buck yesterday. Watched him last year. Remembered saying he'd be... A nice one next year. The woods are starting to heat up. This is Marvin Ferran. And uh, here's a buck he got up there, Georgia. Nice buck there. Good job, Marvin. Marvin worked at the sheriff's office in Leon County. Retired from there. Was in my class back in the early 80s. Good guy. The Ferran family up there in Liberty County. And Marvin's retired now. He didn't have white hair when I told him. Good job, Marvin. Proud of you. Okay. Let's see. Here, right here. Okay. Mr. Winston, I caught this giant gag on October 15th. He was 37 inches long and 30 and a half pounds. 
the first gag I've ever called. I'm thankful our Lord blessed me with this great blessing. God bless you and your, your show. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. So, folks, that is a nice grouper back there when the grouper season was open for, from one of our viewers. Okay. That was Robert Blackman. Okay. So anyway, moving, moving on along, I've got, a, got several more to do. Let's see, this is one of my, this is cool right here now. There he is right there. He's holding it, Robert's holding it up there. When you hold it up, what's cool about it, when you hold it up, you can really see what size it is. That is a nice one. For you mullet fishermen, this is what we do. And I wanted to show you, because we haven't shown what we call red row. That's the fish, eggs, caviar, if it's sturgeon, but this is the mullet row. And I'm on this mullet website, and, it's, and they're sending all kind of stuff. And I picked this up, put the mullet on the grill. This would be really good during the holidays. Right now, that row is good. Uh, even right here, some mullet gizzards. <laughs> Y'all see that? This is old Florida right here. And this was on a lot back in the day. Okay, this is a nice catch right here. Let me see. Okay, you see this catch right here? This is Mike Edwards. Usually catching bass and everything, but check this out. Mike Edwards from Lynn Haven caught a big mess of, of uh, crappie. And look here, clean up. Does that not look good? That's good cleaning. You don't have any uh, bloodlines or anything. That's just really good cleaning. Good job, Mike Edwards, Lynn Haven. Hi there, can you please advertise this or put it on your show? A nice mess of 60 caught by Tony Comerford, Skipper Pettis, and Jamie Pettis of Southport, my neighbors up there, caught in the Jackson River, brim, shellcracker, and a few channel cats. Check this out, okay? Is that not a cool picture? Now on the left, that's, that's Skipper Pettis on the right, and Tony Comerford on the left. Now, the knowledge and experience these two people have over their career and lifetime of fishing uh, is unequal. But now, Tony Comerford is 98. He records your show and watches every day. Is that, now, Skipper's not quite that old, but Tony, I appreciate your viewership. I want you to come on Panhandle Outdoors and share some of your fi fishing secrets. And uh, Alicia, if you can, bring him on next week or two. It'd be great to have him on. Okay, one good story here, Shane Riley, I shot up in Jackson County. He lives here, but he hunts up in Jackson County. I shot this buck yesterday morning, thanks to Crystal Ganey. Now remember we had Crystal Ganey on the show last year with the tracking dogs. We were able to retrieve him today. I hate the meat wasn't salvageable because he weighed around 180. That's a big buck. But it was incredible to watch Crystal with her knowledge and talent with her dogs. Bella found the buck in less than 10 minutes. And that's the one he got there. So, you know, it's always a good story when you can uh, salvage, salvage that and, uh, and uh, find, find the deer anyway. Uh, it was, uh, we had Crystal on the show. We'll get her back on. She's real busy right now. This is the peak of the season. And, and if you need to get a hold of her for tracking a deer, and all the time people are now looking for some dogs to track a deer because we don't have that many dogs out doing it. And she is an expert. So. Uh, you, can, you can find her online. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Glad you're watching us this morning. I know you're getting ready for a big Thanksgiving. I, I'm going to a actual mullet fry uh, <laughs> this afternoon at Bear Creek Hunting Club, and uh, then uh, we'll be putting a turkey on tonight and smoking turkey all night. I spoke about 14 hours, and it, I, we just enjoy our Thanksgiving. I know you do too, so. Uh, I'm not going to eat much for lunch today, but let's move on. I want Monday after the show, I jumped in the truck with, with Bobby Smith, and we headed down to Apalachicola. Cause Bobby called me last week, said he was right on the verge of catching bass number 59,000. So I told him I wanted to document it and do a show off of it. I took my camera. I did a lot of, I did mainly film. I, I fished a little bit, but Bobby, we want to get Bobby catching that bass. I got a picture of it today. Here it is. This is the bass number. Bobby Smith and some of that tide water bass down there in Apalachicola Bay. A lot of bass are down there this time of year. Congratulations, Bobby. I had a grand time fishing with you and, and fellowshipping with you 
Monday of this week, and we're going to, uh, we'll have this video, we'll get this video on one day next week. It take, you know, Gail don't want to edit much during the holidays, and <laughs> I can understand that, so uh, we'll get on toward the middle of the end of next week, and you'll actually get to see it. He, we were tw he was 23 short, and we, we counted 23 down to the, so we had a, we had a good time. A uh, couple of other pictures. Before we get to the pictures, I want to mention this. You know, we're always talking about shopping local, and it just hit me the other day. Uh, when uh, we had yesterday, I had Steve Shea on, and uh, you know, if they're going to do a drawing if you donate your deer hog to Hunters for the Hungry. And who's going to give the prize of the Creedmoor rifle? CNG Sporting Goods. Last week, I was at First Baptist, and at the men, a man up conference and with Mark Richt and all, and, and the prize there in the bow in the archer division was a $1,500 bow. Who donated that? C and G. So you see why I'm always saying, and I really mean this from the bottom of my heart, shop local, folks. As the holiday season comes on, shop local as much as you can. Uh, I know the sporting goods stores all in South Georgia up here in, in Northwest Florida. These, these stores give so much back to our community. So. Uh, we don't get, you know, you don't get them from big box stores. You don't get them from, these, you don't get stuff to give them to our community from, uh, you know, these online places. So if you can, I know you're going to save a little bit of money at times, and at times we'll buy a couple of things offline, online. But uh, if you can, but we, majority of our stuff we'll we'll buy local. <laughs> it, uh, it's just it's good for us. It's, it's really helping out. Being thankful. Before we get to being thankful, I, I do want to mention this. I talked to, uh, recently. Well, I had a memory pop up, you know, on Facebook, you get memories pop up from 10 years ago, and five years ago, and it's a picture or a story. Well, one popped up uh, three days ago. It was a, from 11 years ago. <laughs> we had gone, Gail and I had gone floundering out at a state park. I knew that because we'd gone to a wedding and the reception at Captain Anderson's, and I had my boat hooked up, and I just changed clothes at, at the state park there. We had a pastor get in, so. We floundered, you know, it was open this time 11 years ago. Well, it's not open, you know, now. And I started thinking about it. I've talked to several people even recently about why happened to our flounder. And all of these, and I'm talking about old timers. I'm not really talking about scientists. I'm talking about people who've been around all the time, you know, flounder for 60 and 70 years. I mean, they're, they're in the 80s now. They've floundered their whole life. But one guy went out the other day, couldn't, went to the same place he went the whole life and couldn't find, couldn't find any. This was back when it was open. And they're all saying two things. They attribute some of it to the oil spill because the you know, dispersant sort of settled on the bottom. They said they did some of it. But they said the, the biggest thing really in their mind was the, the dive boats, the divers, uh, really just decimated the population because what, they were taking two trips, a trip in the morning loaded and a trip in the afternoon loaded. And you know, as the flounder went out into the uh, gulf and they just sit there, like, you know, just a target. And, and uh, that, that really is, is what they're telling me. That's come from some experts and all. So that's interesting is what they're saying. Now, uh, well, we'll see if we get some scientific evidence, but the flounder, flounder is not really good right now. What are we thankful for? Okay, here we go. Thomas Khalil, here we go. I am so thankful for you and your show. I got with Wendy to get mine and my wife's Medicare done. We have won fish and seafood, tackle as well, as a custom fishing pole and now a gun. He, he won a gun the other day from Crime Stoppers. The most important thing is to wake up and enjoy a program about this wonderful area and the people that live here, past, present, and future. This is the best place I have ever lived in. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and experiences, real people doing real things. Happy Thanksgiving and thank you for doing something good for all those who watch Panhandle Outdoors. Thank you, Thomas Khalil. Thank you very much. Okay, let me go back. Okay, Tom Martin. This, Tom Martin. Uh, here we go. Happy Thanksgiving, Winston. That's all. We all have many things to be thankful for. Good friends, good family. Most of all, the Lord let me live through the tremendous accident. Still doing a lot of work on my head, left side of my face. But doctors don't know how I lived. I keep telling them God only wants to wants to take the good people, so I'm on the bottom of the list. Anyway, thank you. I hope you and your family have a great Thanksgiving. I'm glad you're doing better, Tom Martin. Good job. Mr. Winston, uh, Herbert and I love to watch your show. It is so positive and great information. We have so many things to be thankful for, God, family, country, but especially fresh water and good air, good fresh air. 
favorite part of the show is when you say, God bless, God be with you, Herbert and Carol Allen from Cottondale. So these, you know, we've got several. We appreciate the feedback we got on these. And uh, one good thing right here, look, we got coming up right here. This Saturday, folks, Saturday, November 25th, is Saltwater Free Fishing Day. So you can, if you have friends coming down, you take them fishing or no license required. Thank you for doing this, sir. Um, the governor and the FWC, Saturday, November 15th. Okay? So, uh, all right. I've got a, I've got a good report the other day on, on talking about reports. We're getting ready to do our famous Friday fishing forecast. But last Saturday, there's some good dove shoots. The dove shooting was hot. And I've seen a bunch of them in my yard lately. So a lot of dove have come through this last week or two. I don't know if you've uh, noticed it yourself. Duck hunting, I haven't gotten any reports on. I know I heard them shooting up at Deer Point, so, but it's been a good, uh, been a good experience as far as uh, the flyaways coming in. Okay, here we go. Our Chopper Dock Seafood Giveaway. Don't forget, they've opened up an area, a restaurant down there uh, on St. Joe Bay, and it's, it's going to be really good place to eat. We've already tried it out, it's good. Okay, the winner of the $20 gift certificate is going to be. Donna Borges from Santa Rosa Beach. All right, Donald. And the winner of the Big Red Snapper. And there's been some nice snapper caught on these weekend. You know, the weekend's still open for snapper. <laughs> there's some nice ones caught. And the winner is a snapper from Alford, Vicki Welch. Santa Rosa Beach and Alford. We covered the panhandle like Kudzu covered Alabama. <laughs> That's the old saying the guy used to tell us. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back and welcome to our famous Friday fishing forecast brought to us by two wonderful local businesses, Jessica Ling of Allstate Insurance and Financial Group and uh, Matt Andrews of Hammerdown Roofing. We're going to uh, get started on it. We, the first thing I want to say, and what I noticed earlier was that just when I was fishing on Monday, Bob and I talked about this too a lot, they're just the clarity of the water. We hit those feeder creeks uh, and they're there are about a thousand of them seems like down there, but the water clarity, I mean, it was so clear seeing, and we were in some small areas, and the water clarity was really, really good. So that's one of the first things I talk about. The, when he, right as he was approaching bass number uh, 59,000, we were, we were talking, and he, he used to, he, one thing Bobby does, and one of his secrets, he just has like eight, or, eight poles down there, and he'll switch up a lot. He switches up a lot. I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I'll try to stay one too long, but he switches a lot according to the water character, water clarity and the depth of the water. And it's really interesting to watch him fish. Really, really good. And we'll get him back on the show pretty soon. And we're, we're expecting uh, if maybe in March or April, he'll hit bass number 60,000. So that's, that's amazing, all documented. All right, let's move on to our forecast. The, the water temperature did drop a degree. We talked about it being, uh, being cool, so it has dropped a degree. Thanksgiving, a lot of people fish a lot. And I'm, one, I'm so thankful we have a free fishing day, free license, uh, no, no license required. So if you get a fan, uh, take advantage of it if you can. The, uh, the okay, the places to go. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this last night. Let's check over here and talk to Hatchet Bay. Okay, here we go. On Chartatchee Bay, uh, if you, the veteran fishermen are going to be over around Black Creek, put in Black Creek, uh, the Point Washington area down here. Bay fishing should be really good if you have a boat. If not, you got some causeway fishing here. Cast netting has been really good there. Go up here in Freeport. We talked about Lagrange Bayou around all those docks up there. That should all be good around Lagrange Bayou. So that's going to be good over in that area. Intercoastal this time of year, we're waiting for really cold weather to come for them to get up in the intercoastal, but it should be really good. The West Bay Bridge, always a good place for sheephead. But now you got a little bit of boat traffic coming through uh, West Bay uh, over, over the holidays like we have now. Burmill Creek and uh, Crooked Creek should be, should be good. The water's clear up there is low. The water's low in all of our areas, but these tidewater creeks or not affected as much as the Apalachicola River and Choctatchee River Creeks. West Bay is going to be a good place. Uh, the Hathaway Bridge should be holding. 
both bridges, Hathaway Bridge and the Lynn Haven Bridge up here, right there in top right hand corner. Okay, they should, uh, right here in the center. They, they should be really uh, good fishing. I, I see that every day. I see people fishing there. And the drum, drum bite in all the bridges is going to be good. Okay, moving on down real quick. I'm going to talk about bass fishing while we're moving. Bass fishing, let me talk about bass fishing. Bob and I were talking about it Monday. Bass fishing is really good this time of year. Uh, you got you to gotta move around to find them, but the bass are really moving around. They're, uh, in fact, the, the bass tournaments are starting to kick back into what's called a winter trail. The winter trails already had one or two tournaments, and now also the uh, not so serious uh, folks, they're, they're seriously thinking about getting back in, into some tournament fishing. So bass fishing is pretty strong this time of year. Moving on down to St. Joe Bay. St. Joe Bay is just super clear. Wendy sent me some video. Uh, well, two days ago, uh, she and Walter were out on their little boat, and just water clarity down there in St. Joe Bay. Uh, had jellyfish and uh, manta rays all swimming around. They're all in the bay this time of year. So a lot of activity in, in St. Joe Bay, Eagle Harbor, uh, Town Beach, this area here, what we call Town Beach. Good casting there, and good place to get some mullet, too. Okay, moving on down to that place, Cola Bay. <clears throat> I talked to some guys who actually went on that St. Vincent Hunt, St. Vincent Island. Just had their big hunt, and for sandbar, I'm not sure that anybody got one. I, the folks, the guys that I know that went down there, they didn't get any, and the, everybody in their campsite didn't get any. So it's gonna be interesting to see what the, what the report was. So anyway, the fishing on the backside of St. Vincent always good. Got to watch out for the oyster bars, but uh, surf fishing. I just mentioned surf fishing this time of year. It's really good, uh, but you've got to you got to move around and the water's clear. So try to find those holes to surface in, use fish bites. Just use some fish bites, cast out there, let it sit. Whiting are starting to come in. So surf fishing should be really good uh, throughout our area. Uh, gotta start wrapping things up. Let's see, I've got other stuff written down. Uh, but the big big thing is just get out there and do some stuff. Walk up and down the beach, uh, go out to some ponds, uh, go up to your hunting camp, fishing camp, whatever. Just get outdoors and enjoy uh, tomorrow. Enjoy your time together with your family and friends. Uh, don't eat too much. but. Uh, Really enjoy it and uh, be thankful. I have so much to be thankful for, of, and I'm going to talk more about that as we close out this year uh, in Panhandle Outdoors, being thankful. But I, I, thank, uh, I thank God for the many blessings I, I have and really looking forward to tomorrow. So uh, I appreciate you watching. One of my blessings is Panhandle Outdoors and all the folks connected with it. So y'all do something good today for fellow man. Enjoy the great outdoors during Thanksgiving. Let's take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.